right, let's do this. Swallow five, the dino of the day. I'm going to bring it up on our screen. It is, we've already mentioned it a couple times. Uh, it is Dino Chiris, which is this amazing, crazy looking ornithomimosaur right here. We're going to talk about the ornithomimosaurs today, things like Dino Chiris, smaller ones uh, like Struthiomimus, Pelicanomimus. Very cool guys. Uh, have these crazy big long beaks with no teeth, featheration, and for many of them, a pygo style, which is feather, an attachment. Uh, in bone at the end of a tail in modern birds where feathers attach to the bone. So we know these guys had some feathers. We know they had these crazy duck bills, not duck bills. I'm sorry. That was yesterday. Uh, these almost like beak like guys with very little teeth. This is it. This is Dino Chiris. It's our dino of the day. Christina, are you, is your Dino Chiris going to be amazing? I'm just, per usual, I'm looking forward to it. Oh man, uh, I'm going to do my best to make an awesome Dino Chiris while we're here together. If not, check Instagram later. Uh, so I can, <laughs> so I can do questions as my priority, but then make a dope Dino Chiris, uh, when you're not all waiting for me. Okay. One more question before we move on. Is there a name for that dude crawling up the wall behind you? Um, uh, Hey, does this guy crawling up the wall behind me have a name? That's, uh, that's, that's Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. Cool. Okay. What's up, Jeff? Thank you. Thank you for joining us again. All right, wow, we got over 80 people, loving it. All right, as per usual, we started with our dino of the day, it's Dino Kairos, and now we get to play dino or not a dino. M, I'm gonna bring up your screen here if I can find you. Is M gone, where is she? Where's M? She was a, she was a picture. Because of her um, computer being weird, so she's coming back in a second. All right, well then, Christina uh, is my number one esteemed co-host. You get to choose who is going to play Dino or not a Dino today. Rob played, uh, M played, both of them won. So hopefully we can go three for three. Who's gonna play today? Oh, I'm admitting M right now. Uh, uh, so if okay, she's so back, I'll let her choose. Hey M, welcome back. You get to choose who's playing Dino or not Dino today. Can you hear us? Oh boy. <laughs> M, welcome back. Hi. <laughs> who would you like to nominate to play Dino or not Dino? Cool. I'm gonna challenge Megan. <laughs> you got this girl. Okay, I'll try not to panic. Megan, <laughs> Megan, you've got the shirt, you've got the hair, you've got the glasses. I know you've got the tood. We've got the correct attitude to play this game. <laughs> uh, quick refresher for everyone. This game is very simple. It's called Dino or Not a Dino. I'm gonna say 10 different names of animals. They are either absolutely names of dinosaurs or absolutely not names of dinosaurs. Your job is simple. You have to say dino or not a dino. Winning, simply getting six out of the 10. We're shooting for D minus here. Okay. What, at a scale of one to 10, where is your confidence right now? Six and a half. Six and a half, okay. Basically, Which is higher than the score I need to get, so. Perfect, let's do this. All right, here we go. I'm sure there'll be air horns at some point. Number one, I'm keeping score. That's what this pen is for. We write things with this. Number one, Pelicanomimus. Or Pelicanomimus. I'm going to say dino just because I want that to be real. That is a dinosaur. That oh is an ornithomimosaur. And we're going to talk about it. In a little bit. Its name literally means pelican mimic. All right. One of one. Second, hexing. Hexing. I'm going to go not a dino. I'm seeing some hexing shaking heads. It is a dinosaur. I'm sorry. Hexing is the actual name of a dinosaur. Another ornithomimosaur. Wow. Uh, I see some comments in Instagram about alligators being dinosaurs. You can leave, Stefan. You can leave. <laughs> uh, all right. You got one right, got one wrong. Number three, Parthenomia. Parthenomia. Hmm. I'm looking for cues from my audience. We're, we're going with the no. Not a dino. Your friends in the chat, give her a hint. Parthenomia. Not a rigorous head shaking. And our champion from yesterday, M, is saying no. Yeah, we'll say not a dino. Not a dino. You're correct. That is not a dino. I made that up. <laughs> I, I saw a picture of the Parthenon, and I thought of that. All right. Two and one. Uh, number four. Harpy Mimus. Harpy Mimus. Dino. Dino. That is a dinosaur. A harpy mimic. Another type of ornithomimosaur. Wow. 
You're three of four at this point, crushing the game. Next, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Australopithecus. Wow, I'm getting a lot of yeah, we're going to, Not a dino. No, Australopithecus is the genus of basically proto-human hominid about 3.2 million years ago. Uh, you may know the name Lucy, the yeah. first fully habitually upright bipedal human was an Australopithecus three million years ago. Okay, so you are correct on that. Wow, four right, one wrong. Next, parkourinator. Parkourinator. Absolutely not. <laughs> it's also not a dinosaur. Uh, although that'd be a really cool name for like a fun, runny, agile dino. Um, shouts to Greece. We have someone from Greece here. All right, you are, wow, you've gotten five right, one wrong. Hopefully it's not really downhill from here. Next, <laughs> Smilosaurus. Smilosaurus. I'm not no yes. No. Uh, so, nope. A combined Smilodon with a dinosaur name that is not a dino. Smilosaurus does not exist. That's okay. Next. Repetosaurus. Repetosaurus. Can you spell that? R A P E T O Saurus. I'm getting a lot of no's here. So I'm going to go no. Well, you should maybe listen to your gut next time because that is a dino. It is a relatively small sauropod, Repetosaurus. All right. Wow. You started strong. I know. I know. We'll you jinxed me, goes. I think. You've got two more. All you have to do is get one of them right. <laughs> okay. Mutaburosaurus. Mutaburosaurus. Thank you for this tea, my, my kind lead. Um, I'm going to go yes. Mutaburosaurus is a dinosaur. That is an Australian dinosaur. You've already won the game. You've gotten six. You got three wrong. Just for kicks and wiggles, our last one. <laughs> cha cha charia. Cha cha charia. C H A C H A charia. I'm going to go no. No, it is not. But these are very fun to make up. Wow. You got <laughs> seven out of 10. I believe that is what M got yesterday. M, did you also get seven yesterday? I did. We're twins. All right. Snatty twins. Score wow. twins. I'm going to have to make these harder because you guys have been three for three in our last three dino or not a dino games. Uh, Megan, you won. What's four? Christina won too. Yeah, thank oh, you. Oh. <laughs> I just assume Christina's going to get them right all the time, but you're right. Four out of four. Um, you have won two things. You have won the right to choose who plays tomorrow as well as a virtual <laughs> high five. Let's go. Let's go. Boom. Nice. Oh, wait. You guys tell me, I'm not the only one who can hear my. <laughs> there, there you go. There it is. <laughs> nice. All right, let's do this. Let's talk about ornithomimosaurs. So I'm going to bring up our shared screen here so we can see what some of these guys look like. So when we think of ornithomimosaurs, the first one that probably comes to mind is ornithomimus, right? This is the basic body plan of ornithomimosaurs. They're called the bird mimic lizards. They lived from about 140 to about 66 million years ago, so right up until the end of the age of the non-avian dinosaurs, also known as ostrich mimics. I mean, ornithomimus literally means bird mimic. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, they were all bipedal, mostly feathered, herbivorous, and some of them were pretty fast. They also had these pretty cool scleral rings, so these little bony rings around their eyes that are similar shape. Um, an orientation to modern birds and reptiles, which gives us an indication or hint that they were probably active in short bursts during the daytime. That's our best guess about those guys thus far. So this is one, they're also very similar and often almost sometimes confused with ratites. So ratites are a group of birds that are alive today that includes our friend like this. Anyone know what, what animal this is? Megan, another quiz, what is this? An emu. This is an emu. Also, you got your ostriches, look very similar. Um, cassowaries, arguably the most dangerous bird on the planet. Amazing coloration with this crazy frill on the top, kind of like Christina's Corinthian helmet lizard from yesterday. Um, and when I say dangerous, I mean dangerous. These are its feet. Uh, Can yeah. we go back to its crazy eyes? This guy? Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's going to murder you. He's going to kick you and maybe disembowel you with these. And for a little bit of scale, I mean, that is, that is a dinosaur murder claw. That is exactly what it is. So those are ratites. Those are the most, I guess, m the, the living animal that's most similar to the ornithomimosaurs. So we're going to talk about three ornithomimosaurs today. We'll probably hit on some other ones. But we're going to start uh, with one we already mentioned, the pelicanomimus, which literally, again, means 
Pelican Mimic. Here it is right here. And now the reason I wanted to start out with this one, let me show you how big it is, or actually here's another iteration of what it may have looked like being hunted by concavenator. These are both uh, animals that were found in Spain. Now this one's a relatively small compared to Dinochirus and to Gallimimus. You can see it's about the size of a person, so not so, so big. But the cool thing, I think, one of the most interesting things about Pelicanomimus is it's one of the oldest ornithomimosaurs way back about 130 million years ago. So it was older and smaller, and it actually had teeth. So if you look at its mouth here, it had about 200 teeth, which is, A of all, a lot of teeth. But even more interesting, it is the only, with one exception, the only ornithomimosaur that had teeth. It had 200 of them. Harpy mimus is the only other ornithomimosaur with teeth, and it only had 11. Right, so very unique because as time went on and we moved on to other dinos like Dinochirus and Gallimimus, we're talking about these um, almost like beaks that had no teeth, toothless beaks. So early ornithomimosaurs had teeth. They lost them as they got older and moved on. Uh, Christina, any questions or thoughts before I move on to Dinochirus, our dino of the day? Yeah, Tyrannosaurus wants to know uh, which ornithomimids were omnivores? Probably all. I mean, we think they were mostly herbivorous, but like, if you think about birds today, especially birds this size, you think they're gonna pass up the meal of like a small mouse or like small lizard or like a fish? No, we think they probably ate uh, a bunch of different stuff. So they were probably omnivore, omnivores. Um, we have exact actual fossil evidence of this from Dinochirus, because we found a preserved Dinochirus with stomach contents that include plants, fish scales, obviously eating fish and plants, as well as gastroliths, so a gastrolith, gastro stomach or eating, lith means stone. So these are stomach stones that a lot of dinosaurs actually swallowed little pebbles to help grind up and di digest their food. So it's really cool that we have that Dinochirus specimen that shows it ate plants, shows it ate gastrolith, and it shows it ate fish. So yeah, absolutely uh, eating whatever they can get a hold of. Great question. Birds also swallow stones, don't they? Some species, yeah. Certain species of birds swallow stones to help uh, grind up, digest plants and other food for sure. But dinos are just the OG birds, so it makes sense. All right, Dinochirus time. Um, like for my money, one of the weirdest looking animals ever. So I wanted to start with this image right here because how do I make this happen? There we go. Ten. Also, Kelly just got here. Hey, Kelly. Kelly's here. Good. Because <laughs> Kelly, you were on the screen right now. That is my friend wearing a, if I can zoom in here, let's see if I can zoom in. Not really. She's wearing a dino dress. It's a great dino dress. So this is my friend Kelly um, at the American Museum of Natural History in New York with the two giant Dinochirus arms. And I wanted to start with this because first of all, Dinochirus means horrible hand. <laughs> so good name. <laughs> also again, about 70 million years old. This one's about 14,000 pounds. So a lot bigger. Let's see, if, do I have a one for scale here? Yeah a lot bigger than the uh, Pelicanomimus or Gallimimus for that matter. But I wanted to start with these arms because A, it's called terrible hand, and B, because for the first 40, so, 40 or so years of this, that's literally all we had. All we knew about this animal were these, these giant arms. So I'll try to keep this brief, but it's a pretty cool story. In 1965, I wrote this down, in Mongolia, there was a Polish paleontologist, her name was, I'm gonna try to pronounce this, Sofia Kielin Jaworska, <laughs> she found these two giant eight foot arms and a couple other random bones. And that's literally all we knew about this animal for almost 40 years. Kelly uh, would like everyone to know that the full translation of its name is quote, terrible hands that look peculiar. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. It's like, all right, cool. And all we had were these peculiar looking terrible hands for 40 years in 2001, um, Phil Curry, a pretty famous paleontologist, was digging in a similar Mongolian quarry and found a bunch of bones that he suspected to belong to this same species, right? But they were still without any hand bones, a feet, or a skull. Two years later, the same paleontologist, Phil Curry, gets a call from a Belgian scientist who claimed to have seen a strange skull, two feet, and some hand bones in a fossil shop in Belgium. Long story short, not only were they from the same species of dinosaur, they were from the exact same individual whose arm Sophia had found nearly 40 years earlier, which was pretty amazing because that now allows us to piece together what was a crazy arm bodiless mystery into an animal that looked like this. 
Now, I'm going to show you a couple different interpretations of this Dinochirus. We know they had feathers. We know they had this big toothless beak. Uh, we know they sometimes fought in medieval paintings like this. That's beautiful. I love the different iterations of these because each one looks just as crazy as the last. I mean, this is easily one of the weirdest looking animals maybe ever. The kind of the cell, a little bit of a sail on the back. Again, we don't know if that was for thermal regulation or displaying to mates. Uh, so obviously, maybe not obviously, but I Photoshopped this into this scene from Star Wars. I just want a quick shout out to Star Wars, not because of the storyline or anything, but because of the animals. I love watching Star Wars movies because they get to practice speculative evolution when they go to all these different worlds with different environments. And you have these different animals they've made up that they think could possibly live in those different weird environments. This is a really fun game to play. Like if you're on a planet with different oxygen levels or different gravity levels or different amount of moisture or whatever, what would the animals there look like given what we know about evolutionary biology? That's one of the... Me as like an animal nerd, that's my favorite part about Star Wars. But this is probably my absolute favorite Dino Kyrus interpretation. I just, I love this piece of paleo art. It's beautiful. I love the little babies. You can see the big, uh, big beak, the giant arms. Man, Dino Kyrus, if you can find me, maybe, maybe other than Therizinosaurus, Therizinosaurus, uh, I don't know if there's a crazier looking dino out there. This is Dino So Kyrus. Dustin, it yeah. looks kind of furry. Can you explain what is the body covering that it has? So feathers. I mean, th you're right. This one looks a little furry like. Now that I'm noticing, you're right. It does look a little more fur than feather. But we know they had some level of feathers. So they should probably have made these look a little more feathery. But again, we're not necessarily talking like flight feathers, like a big long feather you imagine when you think about a bird flying, as much as downy tufts that cover their body either or some combination of insulation to stay warm, different colors uh, to differentiate from other species, as well as maybe different colors for mating displays. But yeah, you're right. That's a great observation. This looks more like furry than, than feathery. Way, way to call out the paleo artists. I like that you're making them stay, uh, stay accurate. Christine, do we have any other questions or thoughts about Dinochirus before we move on to our last ornithomimosaur? Uh, Bella and Emmett were just agreeing. I knew they were feathers. I'm pretty sure no, diner, no dinos had fur. No, not I agree with that. Definitely not mammalian. Sure. Um, and other than that, I'm all caught up on questions. Do other co-hosts have them? Cool. Oops. All right. Moving on to really, well, not the piece de resistance, but the name. Why, why can I? There we go. Minimizing windows. There it is. All right. We're going back to Gallimimus. Have you guys heard of Gallimimus before? People have heard of Gallimimus. You may have heard it. Oh, that's why it wasn't open in there. Sorry, give me one hot second. There we go. Oh, also in the meantime, uh, I got a suggestion yesterday, Grace, to add Dustin says one hot second to the bingo board. Interesting. Do I say that a lot? Done. Yeah, yes, you do. do. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what else? So here is an interpretation of Gallimimus. You can see its thighs. They weighed about around a thousand pounds, maybe a little bit less, about twenty feet long. Um, but they're probably they had a similar brain size and structure, at least the endocast, the shape inside the skull where the brain would have been, similar to that of modern ratites. Again, the group of birds that includes cassowaries and emus and ostriches. So maybe about as, uh, about as smart. But the cool thing for me is that these were by far the fastest of all the dinosaurs. In general, ornithomimosaurs were the fastest. Gall uh, Gallimimus may have been the fastest. We have estimates of saying they ran about 30 miles per hour around 30 miles per hour. Now, I'm gonna ask you before I explain, how, how do we figure that out? How do you guys think we would be able to make guesstimates as to how fast an animal that hasn't been alive for 70 million years ran? How do we even begin to, to estimate? Oh, Michael Partham has a hand up. Can you guys uh, see? Sorry, also. What's you, happening? Can you guys see the cat like way up top? No, but it sounds pretty cool. <laughs> hunting bugs. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Um, well, first of all, uh, a couple people in the chat are saying maybe the distance between their strides in trace fossils, so in the um, tracks. Mm -hmm. And uh, Michael, I'm going to unmute you. Tell us, what do you think? There's a mathematical formula that says if you know the height of an animal's leg, which we know from bones, and the length of its stride, as Christina said, other people were saying, mm -hmm. then you can determine its speed. Absolutely. 
Yeah, exactly. Another, like another small component of that is like the ratio of the size of the femur to the lower leg bones. And yeah, you look at modern corollaries and you can figure out how fast they ran if they have similar size legs and feet and then couple that with trace fossil footprints and trackways and you can guess or you can measure how far apart those feet were and kind of figure out, generally speaking, about how fast they were moving. Now, whenever you see an estimated speed for a dinosaur, maybe this is just me, call me out if you want, I always add about five miles per hour. And here's why. When you think about things that, leave, when you, when you, where do you leave a footprint? Where do we leave footprints that could turn into a fossil? In like mud or in sand, right? And if you're not Inside. running on a hard, smooth surface, you're not gonna be able to run as fast. Like try running as fast uh, in mud versus on like concrete. So I would imagine the footprints that we have that have, le that have been left, those animals couldn't have been quite running top speed so maybe it's just because I'm a runner and I want them to be faster or as fast as possible. I always add a couple miles per hour, but I, I don't know. That's just an interesting thing to me to think about how those footprints that are left, they definitely were not running at absolute top speed when they left those footprints. But again, who even knows? Um, now I bring all this up, A, because they're the fastest, B, I'm a runner, so I relate to them. But C, Gallimimus was incredibly popular and was like, almost like a, a game changer in a sense when it came to our interpretation or at least generally people's conception of how dinosaurs may or may not have been bird-like. So what I'm going to try to do here, if, I don't know, we'll see if this works. I'm going to try to share my screen so we can all revel together. Yeah. Over that rise there. Yes. Keep. Tell me what they are. Uh, yeah. Uh. 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 Gala. Uh. Gala mites. Are, are those meat eating? Uh. Meat sources. Love the scene so much. Really beautiful. Direction changes. Just like a flock of birds evading a predator. They're, uh, <laughs> they're flocking this way. you never look at birds the same way again. Okay. Keep blowing. Follow me. <laughs> so <laughs> I love that scene because A, it's beautiful. B, I love watching like hunt videos. But see, that totally changed the game. A, with respect to like what was possible with respect to CGI and animals or dinosaurs specifically. And yeah, it totally at least started to change the public perception of dinosaurs as much more bird-like. I mean, he mentioned how they you never look at birds the same way again. So that scene was, was huge for a number of reasons. And that is Gallimimus, unfortunately getting eaten by a T-Rex, womp womp. I'm actually curious to know, in the original Jurassic Park, that scene was from that, do, we have, do other people have absolute favorite scenes other than that? Megan? The, no, just that, the, the first scene where they like, see the dinosaurs for the first time that like makes me tear up or cry every time yep yep does anyone else have favorite i like the, I like the velociraptors in the kitchen well i, mean, I remember it most vividly because i think i've seen that scene more than i've seen any other scene in any of the movies i don't know why just whenever it's on tv that's the scene that it's always out when we turn it on but i love it iconic scene iconic yeah. just, uh, do you I'm going to read out T's, uh, who just uh, DM'd me, Alan Grant's dad joke on the electric fence. <laughs> ah! Yeah, yeah, that's good too. <laughs> good too. Grace, I know you're, 
I, I need to know. I need to know. Do you have a favorite Jurassic Park scene? I mean, literally anytime Jeff Goldblum is on the screen, especially when he's like half open shirt, That's injured. This is a family friendly affair. All right. All right. Anytime he's on. <laughs> on yes. Okay. Oh. On, on that note, I have to say my favorite is. Uh, in the helicopter, it's like, you guys dig up dinosaurs. And someone has made, uh, yeah, someone has made a like hour long dub of that on YouTube of, of just Jeff Goldblum's laugh set to a beat. So uh, in that same scene, <laughs> you remember when he takes two female seatbelt parts and ties them together to make it work yes. as a seatbelt? <laughs> Love that, the two females coming together. Life finds a way. Seatbelts find finds a way. way. Yeah. Uh, anyone else want to share their favorite JP scene? I'm going to ask Rob. I got to know. Rob, do you have a favorite scene in JP? Any time that they call a Vegisaur or a Metasaur. <laughs> Vegisaur, <laughs> Metasaur. So good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a few people. Grace, on Instagram, everyone seems to be uh, agreeing with you that really any scene with Jeff Goldblum on screen is a fave. Yo, I want to ask Jada. Jada, hit me. You have a We've favorite. also got someone saying um, at the dig scene when Alan's saying the raptors would eat you alive. I guess to the, the kid at the very beginning. Yeah, that opening scene. Someone like, on Instagram. Just like absolutely yeah. unnecessarily destroys a child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a close okay. second for me. Okay. All right. That's good. Any others? No Gerard else? Bauer and Michael Partham agree with me. Okay. Well, it's not all about agreeing with you, Megan, but you have a good point. All right. Mom! Uh, <laughs> and thank you, everybody in the chat. I have too many favorite scenes in here uh, to read them all out. We have some big fans, though. When T Rex beats the lawyer off the toilet, that one's That's pretty great. Big. Kate on Instagram is saying the glass of water. I think she's talking about when it starts to shake when the T Rex is, is behind them. Yep. Great little subtle scene. Yep, that one's great as well. I, have, I see someone really likes the Dilophosaurus scene where uh, Newman meets his demise. That one's pretty great as well. Uh, I'm trying now. I'm just we're gonna have to do, yeah. We're definitely gonna do one day where we just talk about JP. I think that'll be a fun episode to do. All right, yeah. Um, we're gonna keep it a little bit tighter today, we're going a little bit shorter. So, Christina, another esteemed co host, but mostly Christina because you are the co host. No offense, everyone else, but you're my favorite. Um, <laughs> oh, oh. um, do we have any more questions before? Can you ask me them as we start going through to look at your Dino Kyrus drawings? I'm gonna bring our dino yeah. back up on the screen one more time. This is the one we're twerking with. I'm excited to see your dino Kyrus interpretations. So hit me with some questions or thoughts as we start going. Hold up your drawings, please. Jada, I per usual, I have high expectations. I don't have any questions at the moment, but uh, Natty shared a joke with us. What do you call a T-Rex when it has a car crash? A Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's good, I like that, yeah. good one. It's pretty good. Okay. I saw at least one person smile, so good job, Natty. Uh, Are you guys holding up your pictures? I'm not seeing any, a lot of pictures. Do we? Oh, oh we got some pictures. Ryan yeah, and, I got and, mine up. Ooh, I like there's a couple different interpretations here. Ryan, you're crushing the game. I like that. I assume that's Ryan and Sydney. I like the bill on that one. Almost like that beak situation looks good. I'm going to just click on Jessica right here because we have a cool cat we have to see. People seem to be like, oh, and a Dino Kyrus. Cat and a Dino Kyrus, crushing it. Listen, if you were on any type of Zoom, whether it's a fun one like this or like a work meeting, no one is upset when your cat or dog comes on screen. Like, no one, don't apologize. People want that. Yeah, M, I don't plan to apologize. M, Dino, are you like a stenographer? How did you write that so beautifully? <laughs> I have had to do calligraphy for work a lot. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Here's my progress. Okay. I just wait. wanted to get that terrible hand in. Come back to Christina. <laughs> it's very. I just awful. wanted to show off his terrible hand that oh, looks peculiar. Leaves. I like that. <laughs> I think there's a little bit of sass, a little bit of tude. All right, Jada, let's see what you got. Oh, nice. I added color. I finally got colored pencils. <laughs> what made you choose this particular like lavender iteration? Um, I couldn't find the brown one. <laughs> And that was the closest I had. No, oh, it's way more fun than just straight brown into it. Exactly. Oh, wait, I see a dog. We're going to check in with this large animal. <laughs> also, it appears someone is wearing, are you wearing a monkey or a cat suit with the dog? 
It's a giraffe. Oh, it's a giraffe. Yeah, definitely a giraffe. Well, I couldn't, listen, there are multiple spotted animals. I'm not a giraffeologist. Although I do but know a monkey one is really not cool spotted. Fact. I do oh, know a cool fact about giraffes though. What is the one thing that giraffes have that no other animal on the planet has? I know. Do you know, Christina? You want to tell us? Yeah. Is this a joke or is this real science? Hey, Christina, what is the one thing that giraffes have that no other animal on this planet has? Baby giraffes. Wow, think? it's especially weird when everybody has to be muted. So even if you were yeah. laughing, yeah, it, this is how it. There feels. was a cacophonous applause in my head. Yeah, great. All right, let's see some more of these drawings. Oh, what's up, Max? <laughs> Max is here. Oh, Margot's got her digital drawing. Not wow. I like that one. Looks kind of jacked. Looks no, like he could mess you me up, up, right? You have back good. muscles too. Yeah, I like the sail. I like the little whip on the tail. Did you Smell mention the... about how like the 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 redness on that reminds me a lot of birds nowadays too? Like turkeys have that same. Like the guy, yeah, yeah. It stands to reason. Ooh, Richard, you got Richard with the the yellow and blue University of Michigan maybe iteration here. Oh, I like the feathers on the back of the head. That's good. Even some feathers on the back of the tail. Hygge style, the claws. Ooh, the feathers on the forearms. Again, this the secret stick figure man. The stick figure tra time traveler man. <laughs> All right. Uh, Justin, we have a we have a question while you're looking yeah. at these drawings. Uh, would Dinochirus have an oil gland like a duck for its feathers if it spent time in the water? Wow, you guys asked the best questions. Um, we don't know. Um, and I don't know how much time they spent in the water based on their teeth or their lack of teeth and that, uh, that beak situation, maybe. But I, there wouldn't be like floating and swimming around probably the way that ducks do. So I would guess no, but I love, I've never thought of that. That's such a cool thought. I've never thought of that. I wonder if there's certain dinos that, that had that. Pro I would guess no. Although I will say that ducks and other waterfowl are the oldest lineage of, lineage of birds. I don't know. Wow, that's, I like that question a lot. Oh, Mary Beth. Nice, nice. I like. <laughs> Linosaurus Rex has an awesome dinochirus. I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. Inez, oh, okay. Ooh, wow, look at this one. There's a behind. lot of coloration and stripes. I like the tail feathers. I like kind of like the, not claw, but the um, almost reptilian like foot there. The scales, that one's great. Yasmin, <laughs> I like that one. Oh, we got two, two different iterations. You guys, those look great. I like both of those, black and white. Those are pretty great. Um, let's see, Bella and Emmert. Wow, you got to put a whole environment, environment there where you can see like the ecological niche they lived in. We got a, another origami dinochirus. Love it. You guys, are, you guys are doing great. Let's see, who is this? Uh, Justin, we've got a question from the one and only Sharon. Uh, I don't know anyone named Sharon. <laughs> she wants to know, did any of them have coxcomb-like structure like chickens? Maybe. I mean, there's a distinct possibility, but again, that is a integumentary feature, like a soft part that wouldn't fossilize unless we had like a really great like skin impression. Um, but maybe, we just don't know. I had to say hi to this dog. We're not sure, mom. Great question. Keep them coming. Let's see, do we have any more drawings that we want to show as we go through? Uh, shout out to Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Uh, I like your, what are you wearing? <laughs> I can't, I'm not, it's good. It's a good, I'm not going to unmute you. Natty. Oh, wow. I like that. We got a yellow bill here. Privinodon. Ooh, this one looks, this one looks scarier, but friendly somehow. Into it. Isha Into and Daniel have a bingo. Julian says, I eat you. Well, maybe, but pro well, for the fish. Yes, yeah, so it eat the fish, but not me. We got a bingo. Who's got a bingo? Uh, Keisha and Daniel have a bingo. Keisha and Daniel, Yay. I'm going to give you an air high five right now. Boom. Well done on the bingo. I like that we're going to add a new one. Adela made this great digital interpretation of Dinochirus wading in the water, maybe looking for fish. We're not really sure. All right. So, wow, I love that we have so many people here today. Um, we're coming to the end of our time. Quick plug again, if you want to watch this or any of the other ones that we've done every night, I put this up on my YouTube channel. It's simply called The Dinosaur Show. You can relive this in all its glory. If you want to throw me a couple bones to support all this, it's greatly appreciated. 
I am Dustin hyphen Growick, G-R-O-W-I-C-K on Venmo or D Growick, D-G-R-O-W-I-C-K at Gmail through PayPal. Again, totally up to you. I appreciate you guys being here regardless because it gives me something to do every day and it brings me so much joy and light and love because I get to hang out with other cool dino nerds like all of you who also put me to shame when it comes to paleo art. I really need to step my game up. Now, Christina, I know I didn't tell you. Let me bring you back up here. I know I didn't tell you what we're going to talk about tomorrow. And I know I keep putting you on the spot because it's fun to quiz you. But we've talked about theropods, three-toed, primarily carnivorous dinosaurs. We talked about sauropods, the long neck boys. We talked about the hadrosaurs, the duck-billed dinosaurs. We talked today about the ornithomimosaurs, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about, what else? We talked about uh, the ceratopsians, like triceratops. Can you think of any other dino or group of dinos that we have not hit? I know which one I want to talk about tomorrow. I'm, oh. curious, I'm curious if you can think of any and if it's what okay. I'm Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking about I uh it, if you want. Okay, yeah, give me a hint because I have so many. I need to narrow it down. So, um at the American Museum of Natural History in New York, the fossil halls, there are four on the fourth floor. Two of them have mm -hmm. dinos. One is the Hall of Sarician dinos, one is the Hall of Ornithician, Ornithician. dinos. The group mm -hmm. I'm thinking of that we're going to talk about tomorrow is in the hall of ornithician dinosaurs. Is it raptors? Those are sarician dinosaurs. Shoot. Uh, uh, oh, of course. Uh, ornithician. Could it be, give me one more hint. Um, oh, oh, oh uh, spiky boys. Spiky like, boys. Like stegosaurus. Love, yep. Kate on Instagram asked about this as well. Armored or spiky ones. Yeah, tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the stegosaurs or the stegosauridae. So stegosaurus and all its very closely related cousins covered in plates and spikes and armor. Some of the older dinosaurs as well. So those will be pretty fun tomorrow. That is stegosaurs. Today, just to recap, we talked about the ornithomimosaurs, mostly um, toothless beaks, fastest of all the dinosaurs, feathers, walked upright on two legs, probably omnivores. And obviously the coolest scene, at least in my mind, in Jurassic Park featuring Gallimimus. So those are the ornithomimosaurs tomorrow, the stegosaurs. So if you have questions or things you want to know about those, you can drop them in the comments here in our last couple minutes. Um, but we're nearing the end. So do we have any other last questions about, well, really anything, but ideally about the things we talked about today, the ornithomimosaurs? I have a question. Yes. Since we know that they ate stones like other bird species, do we know if they had like gizzards, like chickens? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I have a question from Chelsea and I'm trying to remember your question. Chelsea, can you retype it in the chat if what I say is wrong? Uh, wondering about if when dinosaurs, the dinosaurs who had feathers, was their entire body covered or was it just in certain places? And uh, were there different types of feathers on their bodies? Uh, for which dinosaurs? Uh, Chelsea, tell me in the chat if it is just ornithomimids or dinos in general. Was it, was it downy feathers, the ones that look like for dinos in general? So dinos in general, um, we're not talking flight feathers, at least not until way, way later. Um, so mostly we're probably talking about small panaceous feathers or like downy tufts of small things that again, weren't adding like the ability to fly as much as adding either uh, insulation to keep warm or colors for main displays. And we know that certain parts of their bodies had feathers more than others, right? And we know that A, from fossil impressions where we can see the impressions around an animal of where those feathers actually were located. So there are more feathers in certain parts than others. One place that we see feathers a lot, especially in uh, theropods, like Velociraptor, are and even in these uh, in a lot of these ornithomimosaurs are those feathers that were like along the forearm. And there's a few different theories as to why those evolved in those sites. One of which is like obviously having big feathers there. This thing isn't flying, so what would that be used for? We think it actually may have been able to help it like hold down prey. So if it grabs something, it can use thrust from those almost wing-like structures to press down and hold large prey as they try to kill it or dispatch of it. So yeah, uh, not fly feathers, different types, and definitely on different parts of the body. We don't know if they were completely covered. Some may have been. Some we definitely know only had feathers in certain parts of the body. 
I mean, like, uh, we today. got one more question on Instagram. Have they found any, I don't know if this is related to today's dinosaur or any, but have they found any fossils with parasites internal or external? So we found a lot of bones with uh, pathologies or like injuries, whether they're from like a disease that, that helped rot away part of the bone or injuries from like bite marks or breakages of the bone that then healed later. Um, and yeah, parasites will be like a type of disease. So I'm not, I'm not like an osteologist. So I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between like a bone disease uh, versus like a parasite that got in there. But yeah, we found a ton of fossilized bones from dinosaurs that show a lot of bone pathologies or bone problems, diseases, breakage scars, that type of thing. And that's a cool insight into what their lives were actually like and the struggles they went through. Great question. Can I add something real fast? Please. Um, Michael Partham and Margo say that since crocodiles and birds both have gizzards, it's very likely that these guys did too. Yeah. We, we're not sure. I mean, again, it stands to reason. And again, this is why I love talking about dinosaurs. There's so much we're just not sure. If we have to look at modern corollaries and use the scant evidence we have from millions of years ago to make guesses, like, did they have gizzards or not? And we're just not sure yet. Maybe one day we'll figure it out. But dinos are a great equalizer in that way. You know, we can be here in a chat making these informed hypotheses about these animals. We don't have to be in like, you know, a PhD level program. We're just not sure. We can all explore and try to learn more together. Dinosaurs. Nature's greatest enigma. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Gateway to science. Gateway to science. Absolutely. All right. So you guys, our time is just about up. This was a ton of fun. Your art was amazing. Again, please post all your drawings on Twitter. Uh, I'm Dustin Groick on Twitter. Dinosaur Whisper on Instagram. Post them on Instagram. Post them on Twitter. I love seeing them. They bring me joy. Uh, but don't forget, you know, I don't care if you're learning about dinosaurs or searching deep down in water as a dinochiris for fish, never stop digging. I'll see you guys tomorrow for Stegosaurids. Let's go. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>